lick some paper. Ugh. Homebrewers, welcome! Hope you're having a fantastic one. So again, as you can tell by the title and uh, everything else, we're doing a Brewing with Bread Juice video of ginger beer. So uh, I do like my ginger beer. I like fiery ginger beer. I just like the ginger. Now I do have a lot of trouble with the ginger because it's never fiery enough for my liking. So I'm going to try something different because I made a syrup a while ago for various things. And I actually kind of think I've cracked it. How to get fiery ginger beer without, uh, well, with it being fiery. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's what we're doing. We're making ginger beer. Uh, if you don't want ginger beer, try something else. For this recipe, I'm actually going to be using a beer kit enhancer, not a malt extract or a spray malt. The enhancer itself. Now I'm hoping that this will give, in part, a very light malty flavour. Because as you know, I normally make my ginger beer with honey. That seems to work the best for me. I know a lot of people like using sugar or brown sugar or whatever your floats your boat. But we've got a kilo of this. We're going to be using 500 grams. Uh, it is a mixture of malted barley extract and dextrose. So uh, we're doing a dextrose brew. Whatever. It should be good by the time it's done. And of course, we're using the trusty bread yeast made by Hovis. So <laughs> that's what we're gonna do. So uh, I'm just gonna get set up and we're gonna get started. That was difficult. So for this, we're not actually gonna be using any heat whatsoever. We are going to be extracting ginger juice directly from the ginger squeezing the life out of it. So I have got myself one of those, uh, what do you call them? It's not a sock. Though I have used a sock in the past. It is actually a, it's a proper bag thing. It's actually a proper thing. Instead of a uh, tights or a pillowcase. Cause uh, yeah, that, that takes forever. So I've already gone ahead and I have pre-scorched these with boiling water, including my container. And uh, just to make my life easier, because the only bits that are going to go in here are the zest of the lemon. Well, that's the plan anyway. Because uh, this is going to be in the fermenter the whole time. So we're only using a little bit of lemon. But the whole lemon is going in juice as well. So on goes our little sock. And uh, here comes the grater. And now I'm going to take 500 grams of ginger and grate the living bejesus out of it. Make it rule the day. It didn't give me its gingery fiery juice. So uh, I'm not going to be peeling this because we're just extracting the juice and hopefully with this fantastic sock none of it gets in that fermenter and the fermenter we're using of course a five litre water container because it just works. So <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm gonna grate this and you get the luxury of skipping ahead to when I'm done. So. See you in a bit. So, we are done. We have grated every bit of ginger that we can find and uh, it's in this lovely sock right now. So what we're just going to do is uh, squeeze it. Squeeze the life. We just want the fresh juice. It's already starting to juice in the bottom. I mean, look at that. And my hands have already been sterilized just like everything else, including the hydrometer, which is really the only thing that we nearly need to uh, sterilize because you can't use boiling water on hydrometers. Who would have guessed? So uh, I guess we just tie this, squeeze it, and then just... There's quite a lot of juice in uh, half a kilo of ginger. It is quite fibrous. So ideally you want the freshest ginger because it has the most juice. I just picked up everything they had in the local shop because I'm like that, I'm caring. So I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time trying not to rip this apart. And just, 
just not a homebrew video unless I've literally poured it everywhere. But it smells amazing. And there's quite a lot of juice to be had, so... More squeezing. <sighs> wow, that smells good. Almost like I really like fresh ginger. Who would have guessed? Oh, it must be getting near the end now. Give me the juice. Ugh. Oh, that is gingery. Oh, two seconds. And it's fiery. So from our 500 grams of grated ginger, because look, you can still get drips out, but good enough. You can use that for some tea or something. So from the 500 grams of ginger that we grated and then squeezed, we have approximately 250 ml of oh, ginger juice. And it is amazing. So, uh, unlike when you use the heat method, you kind of lose something. I mean, you can mix and match, but yeah. ginger juice. It is uh, It's definitely for a try. So I've got a little spoon, and I'm, I'm just, I can't help myself. Just quite literally a little taste. Mm. That is fiery. Well, that is quite nice. That is some good stuff. That That is fiery ginger. So that is uh, technically the hard bit done. So I've gone ahead and I have pre-measured 500 grams of a beer enhancer and it smells malty. Who would have guessed that malt smells like malt? But it's supposed to be quite good. So I've never used it on its own before. So it should be quite interesting to see. So since... We are using the good old five litre water container. We don't need to sterilize it. It is, it's pre-done. So I'm just gonna take the label off because. Oh, there we go. Because now it is a home brewing fermenter. And this is why I can't have nice things. Anyway, so. <laughs> Let's just, uh, let's just have a bit of fun here. So all we've got to do is remove a bit of the headroom because we're going to displace it with our pre-measured 500 grams ish. Because uh, I found out that this does 499 grams before it then fails. So I just added in a little touch more. So it's probably 505, something like that. Close enough anyway. So I've just got a cup and I will drink my water at my leisure. That should be enough. We're about to find out. How does it... It's not bad. It tastes like water. Not as good as the stuff from my tap. Anyway, so I am now just going to add my 500 grams of delicious multi goodness and not eat any because I do like eating the multi goodness. So finger funnel. And this, and in it goes. Well, that was the idea. Uh, really wish my funnel would turn up. I have got an idea. One second. Ooh, I'll go on then. Ow. Oh my God, that's good. Mm. Oh, I've got to wash my hands now. So I should have really seen this coming. Malt extract or spray malt. It's kind of sticky. It's not flowing like sugar because, well, it's mostly like icing sugar. So I've got myself a temporary funnel because I, I need one. So I'm just gonna use a piece of paper. I think that's gonna be the easiest way for this one. Finger funnel isn't gonna work. And well, I don't want to waste all my multi goodness. There it goes. Sometimes you don't have the right tool, but you can make it. So uh, now in goes my uh, 500 grams of multi goodness. And hopefully I've got enough headroom. That is so much easier, he says. Mm. Right. And now, get it. 
I have literally just made a cone of malt. Uh, um, word of advice, spray malt, very sticky. So, well, beer enhancer, any type of malt, very sticky for some reason. It may be a bit of an old bag, but it's moist. So I'm just finishing up and just ended up needed a pokey doofer. But there is a... Just so you can kind of see, it is plastered all over here. I mean, it doesn't waste any. It's literally, you can scrape it, it's that thick. Normally it doesn't matter because you're just pouring it straight in a bucket, but well, it gives me something to snack on, but this paper is definitely not good anymore. So approximately 500 grams. This is coated. Anyway, so as you can see, it actually has quite a nice looking colour to it. It's one of the reasons why I went for it, because it's not supposed to be a, a dark moat or anything. It is literally a beer enhancer, so it does have a beautiful aroma, sort of like a light beer. Who would have guessed? So I'm just going to give this a shake before we start anything else and uh, hopefully all this dissolves because it's literally stuck everywhere everywhere so it does dissolve relatively easy <laughs> famous last words just like everything in this video oh it's gonna be quick lies so um maybe not use a five liter water container maybe just brew it in a bucket and make a double batch open the kettle and just pour it straight in I was just like, oh, I'm only making an experiment. Oh, yeah. Anyway, exercise. Good enough. So, uh, yeah. As you can see, it definitely has head retention. So we should end up with some bubbly, heady, beer-like substance. Om nom 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 nom. So I'm just going to let this settle down for that one side before we continue. And... Uh, Grab my ginger juice that we're going to add in here. Hopefully we should come up to about the five litre mark. I'm now going to zest my lemon. Because I like my lemon zest. Put the zest in there. That is going to be good. I don't care if it tastes like anything other than that. But nom nom nom. So in it goes, squeeze you. And since I've got it here, I might as well use it because I can't be bothered picking out the seeds. Pop that to the side. And now I can squeeze my lemon. And you can keep all the bits, I just want the jus. Perfect. And all the seeds have stayed in the top. There we go. Lovely. So now we have our 250 ml of unadulterated lemon and ginger juice. Nom 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 nom. I'm very happy right now about that. I can't can't even open this up. So all we've got to do really is pour it in and hopefully we've got enough room. Just in case. Look at that. <gasps> Lemon zest. I was hoping it was going to go in, but there we go. That is our solids. I am so glad I did that. Because, well... Oh, this is going to be a... Uh, a risky fermentation. How does it taste? I mean, it tastes good just as it is, but... I love malt. I love all the ingredients. Put them all together. I should have something pretty special. So uh, I've got my hydrometer. In you go, bad boy. It's 
So I've let this sit down for a while and the, it's more or less done. It is right at, it's saying here, so six, give a little bit for the foam, so six and a half. And there we go. Call it there just to make sure. And we are sitting right at 1.050. That's if it ferments to dryness. I mean, there is dextrose, but malt, there is some residual sugar. So I'm hoping that this is gonna come out somewhere around 4.8, 5%. That would be nice. Oh, now that tastes good. Though maybe that's just me, but I'm not really tasting a lot of ginger. But I am a ginger fiend, and this will have time to steep and do its thing. So I guess we need to pitch our yeast, our breaded yeast. Aha. So I'm just using a packet of the Hovis bread yeast and because I don't want to have any bread yeast kicking around, I'm actually going to add the whole packet because why not? Let's see what happens. We know it's going to happen. It's probably just going to... But that's part of the fun. <laughs> so guys, that is basically, we're done. We've added the yeast. We've got to leave it alone. I mean, it is already looking uh, pretty cloudy. So using the usual method of leaving it until it goes clear again isn't going to be a standard method. So we're going to have to work off time. Thing is about bread yeast is, well, it really depends on the yeast. Sometimes it will just drop straight out, other times it will kind of linger. But either way, we shouldn't really do the color. Doesn't matter, I care about the taste. So we're gonna come back in about three weeks time. And hopefully by then this will finish fermenting. It will taste brilliant. And the vast majority of the yeast will have dropped out of the solution. So uh, we can get on with bottling, carbonating it. And the most important thing, drinking it. Oh yes, I, I, all the parts, I'm very interested to see how this goes on. Maybe I have finally got my fiery ginger beer that I have been trying to make for a very long time. So guys, I'll see you in the next one. I'm just, just going to leave it there and uh, lick some paper. Ugh. Malt is so good. Ow.